Hello and welcome to this video on an introduction to waves, which is part of the waves topic in AQA A level physics. So in this particular lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at how to describe the properties of waves. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to define a wave as an oscillation of particles in a medium, understand and describe a longitudinal transverse wave, and then finally deduce the different properties of waves. So we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA a level physics specification 3.3.1.1 progressive waves so just to start us off there are many different types of waves in the universe but we've got to consider the question of what is a wave now wave behavior is common in both natural and man-made systems and waves carry energy from one place to another and can also carry information now it's important to remember that waves do this without transferring matter with the energy so a wave which transfers energy but does not transfer matter is called a progressive wave. So we can consider waves to have the following shape. Now this is an approximation of how waves look. It's extremely simplified. Now we do use waves in many different real world applications such as a mobile phone or listen to the radio. Now designing comfortable and safe structures like bridges and houses and music performance halls also requires an understanding of mechanical waves. While modern technology such as imaging and communication systems show how we can make the most of electromagnetic waves. So in our particular diagram we consider the following image to show one wave. But what is a wave and what are the different types of waves? So a progressive wave is a mechanism that transfers energy and or information from one place to another without the net movement of matter. So it's very important to note that whilst energy travels in a direction the particles only oscillate they move backwards and forwards they do not travel so the particles vibrate or oscillate backwards and forwards but there's no net movement of the particles now when the particles oscillate in the wave they will transfer energy between each other this allows energy to be transferred so in a progressive wave it's important to indicate that energy is transferred but matter is not and it's shown in a number of different examples so an example would be when a twig is dropped into into a calm pool of water. Ripples form on the water's surface, but the ripples don't carry the twig or the water away with them. Another example would be if you strummed a guitar string and created a sound wave. So the sound waves do not carry the air away from the guitar and create a vacuum. Another example would be when you speak, your voice, your voice box vibrates, making sound waves travel through the air. But the air itself does not travel away from your throat, otherwise you will create a vacuum. So it's important to know that instead the particles are oscillating backwards and forwards backwards and forwards as shown in these particular diagrams here so the waves cause the particles to move backwards and forwards in an oscillation or a vibration so you would say a wave causes particles to oscillate or to vibrate now one complete oscillation or wave is when the particle moves one way then the other way and goes back to where it starts. so this would be one complete oscillation or wave it would go up its starting point and oscillate in one way then back to the starting point and then the other way then back to the starting point now when your particle carries out this oscillation energy is transferred along when this takes place now the correct name for energy transfer is called propagation now the way in which particles vibrate allows you to classify the different waves so what way what way the vibration occurs allows you to name your different types of wave but it's also important to note that a wave is a pathway for energy to move in the universe Universe, and it can cause an energy to change store. Now, when energy store, stores change without a wave, we then actually say work is being done. Now, we call that idea mechanical work. So, in a system, there are four ways to change energy stores of objects. And remember, a system is an object or a group of objects which interact with each other. So, our ways to change energy stores are work done by a force, work done by an electrical current, heating via waves, or radiation via waves. Now, so what have we learned so far? A wave is a mechanism that transfers energy from one place to another place without the net movement of particles. In a wave, particles will oscillate about a position, but they'll not move position overall. And waves can be classified as either mechanical or electromagnetic waves or transverse or longitudinal waves.
Now, a wave can be an oscillation or vibration of particles, with the oscillation being a representation of the energy found in the wave. The greater the energy in the wave, the larger the oscillation. Now, there are two different materials which can os be oscillated in a wave, which gives us electromagnetic waves and mechanical waves. So, a mechanical wave is a wave which is an oscillation of matter, for example, atoms. So, a mechanical wave is caused by particles vibrating at a source. Once again, remember, here, there's no net displacement of particles. The particles move back and forth. So it's important to note that mechanical waves need particles for energy to be transferred. So this means that mechanical waves can't travel in a vacuum because there's no net displacement of particles. So we would state here, remember, that there's no overall movement of our particles. So for example, in a sound wave, particles do not travel from the object making the sound to the object detecting the sound. The sound wave is a series of particles vibrating backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, colliding with the particles, the next particle next to it, and making those particles vibrate, passing the energy on. So you would say that particles oscillate or vibrate in the substance and pass the energy on to the neighbouring particles. So as we mentioned before, this means that mechanical waves need particles for energy to be transferred. So mechanical waves cannot travel in a vacuum such as that of space. Now the other type of wave is an electromagnetic wave, which is a wave which has oscillations of the electromagnetic field lines. So an electromagnetic wave is caused by, is caused by fields such as the magnetic and electrical field oscillating at a source. So this means that electromagnetic waves do not need particles to travel. They only need the electric and magnetic fields which permeate the entire universe. So these electromagnetic waves can travel anywhere, even a vacuum. So electromagnetic waves can travel anywhere, such as over the vacuum of space. Now, electromagnetic waves include things like light, x-rays, infrared, gamma rays. Now, electromagnetic waves in a vacuum can travel at the fastest possible speed in the universe, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Nothing can travel faster than this speed. Now, electromagnetic waves travel fastest in a vacuum as there's no particles present to slow the wave down. So electromagnetic waves are oscillations of the electromagnetic field. They can travel through a vacuum. Now all electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed, the fastest speed in the universe, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second when they're in a vacuum. And examples include visible light waves, infrared waves, gamma waves and radio waves. Now mechanical waves are oscillations of particles. They cannot travel through a vacuum. Now mechanical waves travel at different speeds depending on the material that they're traveling through. Now examples of magnet and mechanical waves are sound waves, seismic waves, water waves, waves on a string. Now, waves can oscillate in two ways, giving us two different categories of waves. So you can categorize your waves as either transverse waves or longitudinal waves. Now, in longitudinal waves, the oscillations are in the same direction as the energy transfer. But in a transverse wave, the oscillations are at right angles to the energy transfer. So in a transverse wave, the oscillations of a transverse wave are perpendicular at 90 degrees to the direction in which the waves transfer transfer the energy in the, which they propagate. Now remember in a wave the particles don't move position, they only move backwards and forwards, they oscillate. So an example of a transverse wave will be a water wave ripple. Now a longitudinal wave is where the oscillations of a wave are parallel, okay, there is a zero degrees difference to the direction in which the waves transfer energy or propagate. Now again, remember the particles will oscillate backwards and forwards in your longitudinal wave, they won't actually move position overall. So it's very important to indicate that they're oscillating. So transverse waves are oscillate, so where, where the oscillation of a transverse wave are perpendicular to the direction in which the waves transfer energy. If we assume the energy propagates from the left to the right, the waves oscillate up and down and all electromagnetic waves are transverse. So examples include radio waves, light wa waves, UV waves, x-rays. Now longitudinal waves, the oscillations of a longitudinal wave are parallel to the direction in which the waves transfer energy. So if we assume the energy, energy propagates from left to right, the waves will also oscillate from left to right. And examples of longitudinal waves include sound waves, P-seismic waves and water waves.
Now, if we consider a diagram of a transverse wave, we can describe the transfer of energy with lots of different terms to detail wave motion. And once again, remember in this diagram that the particles aren't changing position, they're only moving backwards and forwards, they are vibrating as shown in the diagram. Now, the first thing you can note on this diagram is A, the amplitude, which is measured in meters. And the amplitude of a wave is the maximum displacement of the particles from the equilibrium position is shown here. Now remember the equilibrium position is the rest position of the particles or of the field lines if it's an electromagnetic wave. The wavelength, which is given the symbol lambda, is measured in meters m as well. So the wavelength of a wave is the length of one whole cycle, so it can be measured as the distance between two peaks of consecutive waves. So it's fundamentally the distance traveled before a wave repeats itself. Now the time period t, which is measured in seconds, is the time it takes for one complete wave to happen. And like wavelength, it can be measured as the time it takes to travel between two peaks of a wave. So again, it's the time taken before the wave repeats itself. Now the frequency of a wave is measured in hertz, and it's the number of complete oscillations of a wave in one second, which is closely linked to the time period of the wave, because actually frequency of a wave is equal to one over the time period period. So let's just clarify that again. Amplitude, which is measured in meters, is the maximum displacement of the particles from the equilibrium position. The wavelength, which is given the symbol lambda and measured in meters, is the length of one whole cycle of a wave. And it can be measured between two adjacent peaks, troughs, or any two points on a wave and the same point on the next wave. The time period T is measured in seconds and is the time taken for one complete wave to happen. Like the wavelength, it can be measured as the time it takes between two adjacent peaks, troughs, or to get to the, back to the same point on a wave. And frequency is the number of waves passing through a fixed point per second and is measured in hertz. Whilst wave speed v, which is measured in meters per second, can be considered as the, the uh, distance traveled by each wave every second, or can be considered as the speed at which energy is transferred by a wave. Now, as we've seen previously that on that diagram, wavelength, amplitude, and time period can be easily observed by a wave form diagram. But the time period, which you can calculate from a wave from a waveform diagram can also be used to calculate the property of frequency. Now frequency is one of the most measurable properties of a wave and you've got to be able to calculate frequency which is how many waves are produced or pass a point every single second. So like we said if frequency refers to the number of waves that pass a certain point each second and the unit of frequency is, the, is hertz. So 1 hertz is 1 wave produced per second and 20 hertz is 20 waves passing a point every second. And we can calculate frequency with the equation frequency in hertz is equal to 1 over the time period of the wave in seconds. So let's look at an example question. A wave has a time period of 4 seconds. What is the frequency of the wave? Well, the first thing is you write out your equation. Frequency is 1 over time period. Second step is you substitute your values into your equation. So it's 1 over 4 seconds. You then calculate your answer. 1 over 4 is 0.25 hertz. So you should always check your answers are given with the correct units and to the correct significant figures. So to summarize what we've learned in this particular lesson is you understand waves are an oscillation of particles in a medium and we know the terms amplitude, frequency, wavelength, speed and we know that frequency is one over time period. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson we should be able to define a wave as an oscillation of particles in a medium, understand and describe a longitudinal and transverse wave, introduce the different properties of waves. So thank you very much for watching this lesson on an introduction to waves which is part of the waves topic for AQA A level physics. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.